Is the refinance boom already over? Was that just a one week blip? How about how many people caught the drop versus said, oh, it's gone lower. Let's wait till it go lower. And we're going to talk DSCR loans in the fives. How can that be? We're going to talk about all of that and more with the lovely Jonathan from Convoy Home Loans. How you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing well, man. Where do you want to start? You want to start with the refi boom being over? You want to talk with people that looked a gift horse in the mouth and passed? Or what do you want to talk about? Uh, let's talk Let's talk about the uh, the refi boom because it's interesting. Um, I had a few people call me out in, in, the, in the last week and say like, you know, Hey, you said it was, uh, you know, in the rectangle broke below and now things are going to get lower. And I was like, <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm not right a hundred percent of the time, but <laughs> you got this one. Yeah. But you know, this it's, uh, it's funny, right? I mean, we saw it and everyone was panicking. Rates are lower. Headlines are like, you know, refi boom starting now. Everything's crashing. Get in. Right. Um, and everyone kind of, started as we saw last week applications went up everyone was trying to jump into the market and then today you know this past few days what happened it's right back right back right back to where we were um you know and and we're jumping back into that rectangle again um because who knows what happened right obviously there was a whole conspiracy with uh, all the banking stuff kind of freezing too um all that stuff kind of coming into play. So they, the refi boom is not over. And the reason I say that, and I'm going to make a bold statement. The reason I say that is because this opened up, I think a lot of people's eyes. Ah, okay. That, yeah. th it does that. It, yeah. Mm -hmm. The consumer is a very, consumer is wild to study, but you're absolutely right. It, it often takes a shocking event to open people's eyes, like rates falling half a percent in three days or whatever it was. But once they're open, they're open mm -hmm. and they start conversations. So uh, yeah. I think that's, I think, I think you're right. Yeah. Because the, the conversations needed to begin. There was a lot of trap equity, oh, which yeah. we talked about. Right. Um, and a lot of, uh, obviously equity in a property I like to consider is almost like dead money. Right. Because yeah. you can't, you can't touch it unless you resuscitate it back to life, whether through a refi or a sale. Right. There's only two ways to resuscitate it. So, um, it, with a lot of people with dead money on the sidelines that were like, I'm going to wait to refi. And then, oh, whoops, rates down. Now I want to refi, right? The people that are in that market are now like, okay, well, now I already, I already started the process of refining, or I already started looking into what's going on. How can I kind of use this yeah. in my favor, right? Because yeah. if anything already, now- so They sold themselves. They sold themselves yeah. on it. It, which is, I think, a good thing, right? Because they're sitting on so much equity and you're not going to do anything with that equity unless you reinvest it. And it doesn't it doesn't help you increase your uh, liquidity if you don't have that equity out. And it yep. doesn't help you increase your net worth if you can't reinvest tax-free money. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think it just opened up the the eyes for the other people um, yeah. and everyone else that, that kind yeah. of uh, drove this forward. I like it. The other thing I want to talk about here before we get to DSCR loans in the fives, which is wild, is this human nature that when things go one direction, it's our natural reaction to think they're going to keep going that direction. And what do I mean? We've already said it. Rates fell and they fell very quickly. I knew there was a lot of people looking at refi that said things like, you know, basically 6.5 is not good enough. I'm going to wait for six. And they miss the boat, right? One of the things I've often talked about is if you like it, lock it. Yeah. And and I don't think enough, I think I think this caught so many people by surprise. It was so sudden and so drastic. They just assumed it had to keep going. And as we've learned, that's not always how it works. Yep. And obviously, um, what was interesting is Jerome's Powell, Jerome Powell's kind of response during that time, right? Which was, Hey, you know, we're, we're, we're looking into it, right. We're looking into maybe making more rate cuts happen. Yada, yada. And I think that those comments he made during that time further priced in, you yes. know, a lot of what he was going to do and the effect on the market. Right. Cause I was, I don't know if he did that strategically. I don't know if he did that, you know, on accident, but what he did was price in, I think further the cuts that might come and then what's going to come in the future because jobless claims came out today, right? And 
we're looking at all this data that is kind of indicating, hey, you know, it might be needed, might not be needed. What, what's Powell actually going to do, right? Yeah, it's funny you bring that up. I mean, for a while, and I actually haven't checked this afternoon, but the market was pricing in a 50 basis point cut in September. Uh, they were pricing in something like 125 basis by January. And I think to, I think the market has always been ahead of the Fed. I mean, I, I, I'll i tell you that I think there's at least a 25% chance today there's no cut in September. We have five economic numbers coming out over the next, you know, whatever it is, six weeks. We get weekly unemployment claims, which again, today was better than expected, 233 instead of 250. Uh, you know, the economy doesn't feel like it's falling apart. I know Monday was drastic, but that was, a, you know, that was a, an event that started with Bank of Japan. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, the, Jerome Powell's not going to bail out the stock market. That is the Fed foot. He's killing the Fed foot. He's the stock market goes down a thousand point. He doesn't care. He yawns and looks the other way. Yeah. I mean, it bounced back up. You know, it's uh, all, all the crashes that were happening bounce back up. And same thing happened with rates, too. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. They, like, they are still lower. Right. They are still lower. But we're we're back in that range that I talked about. Like we've been talking about for the last six months, which is between that four, maybe candlestick down to three, nine, three, eight for a little bit. But back up to four, up to four five. Like we're still in that range. I don't know what that'll entail in terms of whether it'll continue to stay that way. You know, but like I said before, I hope it does. And you say also higher for longer, mm-hmm. right? Yes, because please. Yes. Um, this this blip, right, is not good for my sanity, <laughs> for anyone in the in the industry sanity. Um, mm-hmm. but but it did. Uh, I think it did start. I think that the traction for a refi boom that mm. it might have just ignited it in slow burning, and then when rates actually do start to actually taper down then I think it'll really start like pe- people will be able to jump into the market and cost average down. Oh, I love that. I love that. Well, the other thing you want, I wanted to talk about here is actually DSCR loans with a five handle. You're kidding, right? That That's not possible. It, so it is. And and what's crazy is we've been talking about it. I think for, I think Dustin talked about it last week, week before, uh, but the DSCR rates right now, we have a basically a new fund that allows for us to buy down below the prime and below the rest of the market. Um, so we are, I'm, I just closed one yesterday at five, eight, five with a three point buy down. Yeah. Wow. So, so it's like, it's not for everyone. Right. And and whenever I talk about this, people call me and they say, you didn't clarify that it's with points. I'm telling you now it's, you know, Hey, three points. It, it's it, it, there's a cost in, with it, right? It's not cheap. However, right. If you're in a five handle, and let's say investment rates, not primary rates, but let's say investment rates drop to 6% from 7%. Do you mm-hmm. care? Not mm-hmm. really, right? Do you care if it goes from 6% to 5%? Not really, because the payment difference from right. 5, 8 or 5, 7 or even 5, 9 versus 5 mm-hmm. is not big enough to refinance lower, right? Correct. So what you're setting up for at that point is, hey, let's just put in the commitment now, especially if it's yeah. a refi, right? If it's, if it's a refi and you have an opportunity to buy it down here, who knows how long these programs will be around? Who knows how long we'll be able to buy it down this low? Who knows what the market will do, right? The general consensus is that it'll get better, but there is no one with a crystal ball. And just mm-hmm. like we saw happen in the last week, literally within days, we know that the market can shoot up just as fast as it went down, right? Exactly. So- if you have an opportunity to lock it into something so low, yes, it costs money, right? Because it's lower than the market. We have to, we, we, we have the rates so cheap because we sell these loans pr- like below the prime and we have to, there's a, there's a spread you have to cover, right? Yeah, obviously. Course. So you're paying these points to buy down the rate to get to a situation where you don't have to refi again, which is yeah. not a bad position to be in. Yeah. And, and let's yeah. just put some numbers on it, right? So you get three points up front. You basically create a set it, forget it loan which is not a bad thing, it's, you know, because a refi, there's going to be points and all these other things involved. You're kind of paying for a closing twice. So yep. do the math, right? Do the math and see what's better for you in your unique situation. Yeah, I mean, um, and, and the easiest way to do the math that we've talked about, is, it's all about time horizon, right? But if you're investing right now, you're not expecting appreciation tomorrow, right? No. You're not expecting no. No. You're not expecting massive cash flow to start happening tomorrow. 
right? You have to have, like we talked about before, it can't be a one to two year to three year horizon. It has to be a five at least to 10 year horizon when you're buying real estate, unless there's an opportunity to, to 1031 or buy something else that's so much better than the property, right? You're buying the assets right now at the prices you're buying them at because you're looking at five to 10 years. That's when you really truly appreciate and start receiving that, you know, that benefit. So if you're looking at that time horizon, does it make sense to pay three points, which, you know, a lot of loans that come through are maybe like $150,000, $200,000. Is it doesn't make sense to pay six grand to keep it at five, eight, five, nine for five, seven for 30 year fixed and not have to worry about it? Yes, 100%. Because Absolutely. You're gonna, people only care when you pay it right at the beginning. And if it's a refi, you're not paying it. But, you know, most people, people will forget it. The moment that they do all these buy downs, they do all this stuff, they close the loan. And then after that, they don't care. No nope, payment. It's all about payment. Right. Yep. Exactly. But they, in the moment, it just feels so important. Mm -hmm. But in reality, what we're realizing and what we've said before is like, it's, it's about the actual numbers of the investment, right? Does the payment actually work for the property yeah. to allow mm -hmm. you to cash flow? And, you know, if it's negative cash flow right now, what's the opportunity to have the cash flow be? in the next you know few months or whatever because maybe there's rental units that need to be fixed up or something's mm -hmm. vacant um, but is the potential there to cash flow within like a one month two month period of time right i love that love that if somebody wanted to reach out to you and share their situation and ask for their specific questions how do they do that go to convoyhomeloans.com and let us know you came from orat yep you got you got to do the drop down tell them you came from orat otherwise you end up in a queue with all of those people and you'd much rather work with this guy or his partner, Dustin, Jonathan, you're amazing. Thanks again. Thank you.